are 30 miles north of Fresno, California. In this rural setting lies the Central California Women's Facility, the largest penitentiary of its kind in the world, home to more than 3,500 inmates. Tonight we go behind closed doors to find out firsthand what life is like on the inside. The inmates call it the house, Chowchilla, CCWF, an octagon-shaped complex of buildings sitting on 640 immaculately manicured acres in almost the geographical center of California. But this is no country club prison, and they make sure everyone knows it. No one gets through this fence alive. If you touch it, you will surely die, So, and that surrounds the perimeter. That ensures that no one will escape. Built in 1990 to house 2,000 inmates, Chowchilla now holds almost twice that number, including the most dangerous women in California. 311 of the women here are serving out life sentences. 800 are mental patients with felony convictions. And all 11 women who await execution on California's death row are also here. That's one-fifth of all the women condemned to die in the United States. This was the environment I was about to enter. Not as a reporter, but as an inmate. I was stripped of all my possessions except for my wedding ring, which the prison allows inmates to keep. Dressed in a day glow orange uniform, the mark of a woman being transferred from another county, I was escorted into a secured prison van, handcuffed and shackled. I did not know what lay ahead. It was a feeling of complete vulnerability. As the van pulled through the prison checkpoint, I knew that once I went behind these closed doors, they would lock behind me. My first stop was inmate processing. I was placed in a holding cell called the tank with about a half dozen other women. Even though our cameras were rolling, it was apparent to me that these prisoners did not know who I was or why I was there. How long are you in for? Six years. How long are you in for? Two. Two? I'm just going to I'm used to people answering my questions, but in the tank, it didn't work that way. You guys, can you first time? Hmm? Yes. No. What did you do? What did you do? I don't like to discuss it either. I didn't know it at the time, but I had passed my first test. Don't answer anything unless you have to. Those are my words. Uh, she's like, yes, you take that one. I'm listening. You take that first wave. You did real quick in here. Yeah, you, you have to do survival. Did yeah. you? Yeah. You've never been in the game? Yeah. The white girl game? You don't have the lightning bolts? I don't know. What you get arrested for? Oh, oh, you guys are the whole court. The white and the blonde now. You're the blonde. Yeah. There you go. I got a bad wand on. Yeah. Hey, but you know, some of the white girls are down. You know? It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Don't scare too much. It's a lot of people here, though. Yeah, you're not going to tell them the truth. Stick to yourself. Mind your own business. In processing, I was given an inmate number and apprised of my rights and restrictions as inmate number W85436. Everything that I would be allowed to carry with me, paperwork and a small personal hygiene kit, fit in a paper sack. Okay, I'm not sure what size baseball shirt do you wear, small, medium, large? Probably a medium. A medium? I received a prison issue clothing allotment, t-shirt, jeans, sweatshirt, underwear, and nightgown. And then I was taken for fingerprinting. And my mug shots. Gotta finish that. 
In the interrogation room, the officer in charge was given a fake rap sheet for me. Based on the information inside, he determined which cell block I would be sent to. We have reviewed the documentation that I received from um, LA County, revealed that there's some high notoriety case factors. Okay, so for that reason, we're going to place you in administrative segregation. The officer explained that administrative segregation is what outsiders know as solitary confinement, where the prison's most dangerous inmates are housed. I was then taken to the strip room. In full view of the staff, I was told to change into my prison uniform. Normally, prisoners are strip searched at this point, a procedure that I was allowed to skip. Handcuffed and escorted by two officers, Deborah Shannon and Lisa Longero, I was taken to building 504, what the inmates call ADSEG. The women inside this building are here because they pose a serious threat to the correctional officers, the other inmates, or to themselves. The officers who work here are required to wear protective vests at all times. The first thing that hit me when I entered was nonstop shouting coming from all directions. The noise inside ADSEG was frightening, and these women did recognize me. From my holding cage, I could see the tiers of solitary cells and the correctional officers in their protective vest, reminding me that I was not wearing one. Sitting in that small cage was one of the most unnerving experiences I've ever had. Okay. 